In this presentation, let us understand the data structure called dictionary, the operations and the methods associated with the dictionary and the potential applications. A dictionary is a data structure which is very similar to a list. The similarity lies in the way we access the elements. We use index operator that means square brackets to access the dictionary items as well as list elements. Also we can insert the elements or items onto dictionary and, and, and list with the square brackets. What are the differences, dissimilarities between lists and dictionary? The difference lies in terms of uh, ordering of individual elements. In a list, elements or values are sequentially ordered or sequentially stored in the list there is a linear ordering among the elements first element is always stored in the location 0 that means a key or an index 0 second element found at index 1 and so on but in case of dictionary it is unordered collection of items where each item has two fields one is called an index or a key and second field the value associated with the index or a key ultimately we say that item is a key value pair and dictionary is defined as a collection of items having key value pairs as I said, dictionary is like a list in general. In a list, the index is always an expression having integer value or even a value which is of type integer. But in case of dictionary, the index can be of any type. We can have characters or a string as an index. We can think of a dictionary as a mapping between the set of indices or keys and the and the values and each key always maps to a value that's why the association of a key and value is called a key value pair or sometimes referred as an item How to create a dictionary in Python? So we use a function called DICT dictionary, which creates a dictionary with no items. It means that it creates an empty dictionary with zero items. Since it is a built-in function, as a programmer, one should not use DICT as a program element in in defining a variable or a function name etc let us create one empty dictionary called the english num the number to the position 
ENG to SP. With the dictionary keyword DICT. So this instruction creates an empty dictionary called ENG2SP and if you print this dictionary we get only a curly brace having no items enclosed within the braces. To add an item into the dictionary, we have to use the square brackets like this. To add first element into the dictionary called ENG to SP, we have to specify the index or a key inside the square brackets and then use the assignment operator followed by the a value. This instruction creates a dictionary with one element, one item having a key called one and its associated value first. And if you print the dictionary now after inserting the first key value pair we get uh, one item with key one and its associated value first we can also insert multiple items in one instruction it means that we can initialize the dictionary with a set of items. Here is an example. Here we create a dictionary with three items. We are now we are not using a dictionary, a method, built-in function to create a dictionary. We use curly braces and we enclose each of the items. We separate each of the item with the comma and each item is represented with the syntax key colon followed by item. In this example, we have a key of type string and a value is also of type string. We can also create a dictionary with a key integer and value string or key with string and value as integer or even we can have both key and values as integer or even mixed types. If you print after creating this dictionary we get the same representation as that of input format. We get the result in the same representation of this uh, input. The order of the key value pairs is not the same. That's why I told it is a unordered collection. There is no ordering among the items that are present in the dictionary. And this order of this item is unpredictable. And this is not a problem because elements of the dictionary are never indexed with sequential indices or sequential integer values. Instead, the values are always stored based on the keys. That's why if you want to access any value which is stored in the dictionary, we need to specify a key which is associated with that value. For example, if I want to 
access the value associated with the second key that is key called 2 I need to use a same index operator to access this by specifying the dictionary name followed by index operator within the index operator we need to specify the key this instruction returns the value that is being stored in the dictionary with the key called 2 and ultimately we get the result a second if the key is not found in the dictionary then the system will raise an exception saying key error followed by the key that is being specified while accessing the dictionary we can also find the number of items that are present in the dictionary with the same function called length so length is a polymorphic function it is used to get the length of a string to get the number of elements in the list even now we can use the same function to get the number of items present in the dictionary so length of ENG to SP will now returns a value 3 as we have we have initialized the dictionary earlier with the three elements three items we can also apply the in operator with the dictionaries the in operator checks whether the key whether the specific key is present in the dictionary or not if a particular key is present in the dictionary the in operator will returns a boolean value true if the key doesn't appear in the dictionary then it returns false if we write this instruction 1 in ENG to SP the key one whether it is present yes it is present in the dictionary and this statement results in a value true what about the second example whether first in ENG to SP the first is a value it is not a key value is present but the key with the name first is not present in the dictionary that's why we get the value result false then how do you check whether the particular value is present in the dictionary or not for that first we need to get the list of values that are being present in the dictionary and in Python we have a method called a values which is associated with the dictionary which returns all the values that are present in the dictionary so to retrieve all the values that are being present in the dictionary called ENG to SP we have to write ENG to SP dot the method values this values method will return a list of values that are present in the dictionary that's why we enclose this dictionary dot values with a method list so this list of dictionary dot values will return a list of values that are present in the dictionary and we create a, a new list called vals which contains only the values present in the dictionary and once we have a list of values we can apply the in operator on the list we have seen in the last presentation how to use in operator with the list element in the same way if the value 
the first if it is present in the list valves then it, it returns true if the item element is not present then it returns how this in operator is be in operator is being implemented in python in operator is implemented in python differently for lists as well as for the dictionaries in case of list in operator is implemented with the linear search algorithm because a list is a is a ordered collection of elements the sequential arrangements and to search for a given element your search should start from the first element and the comparison should start from the first element then second element and so on till the element is found or till the till the end of the list is reached without a success and the average comparison is always the 50% of elements need to be compared in the worst cases you know that it is the length of the list what about the implementation of in operator for dictionary it uses a concept of a hashing and hash table and you know the per performance of hash table is always order of one only one uh, comparison right it actually uh, computes the hash function with the ha computes the hash value based on the predefined hash function and the complexity lies in just accessing the a value which is associated with the hash key that is being generated with the hash function and the complexity of this hash table implementation is always either the best case worst case or average case is always order of one but in case of linear search it is order of one in 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 case of best uh, Uh, arrangement of i elements and uh, n by 2 is a uh, average search efficiency and uh, the o of n which is a number is the nothing but the length of the list uh, for the worst case uh, scenario let's take up the first application of dictionary that is frequency counter problem what is this frequency counter problem it is to count the appearance of each of the element present in a given collection we can specifically define a letter counter problem for example we have a string having number of letters and we need to find the frequency of appearance of each of the letter present in a string this is a simple computational problem which can be solved in different ways with the help of different data structures the thing is we need to identify the best data structure which is available which is efficient in terms of computational time as well as the space that is being occupied with the solution let us take up the first data structure that we have that is list we can have a a simple solution the solution is store the frequency of a character in a single array where to store store the frequency of the character 
with the index which is equal to the ascii value of that letter or character whenever the new letter is is to be considered from the string get the ascii value of it and increment the counter of at that location this solution is quite simple and uh, it takes uh, order of one complexity to search the single character ultimately if there are n characters in a string complexity is order of n 1 into n what about the space for example letter a ascii value is let us suppose 61 and b is 62 we are using ascii values as ascii values as indices in the list in that situation we will find so many empty cells 1 0 2 60 that are vacant not being used for any of the purpose and definitely we cannot have estimate the space because if we just use letters maximum 80 80 cells are required if we take up more characters then definitely based on the ascii value we have to allocate the adequate space that means we need to know ahead of time which character appears in the string in order to allocate the size for the list that is a problem space is a problem there is one more solution where we can have two arrays one to store the character and second array is to store the frequency whenever letter is to be considered put it in a array starting from the location 0 initialize the second array or list with the counter 1 and whenever new character appears put it in the next location of the list subsequently initialize the counter in the second list with 1 and if same character appears we need to search the location of the same character that is being present that means for any insertion of any for every character we need to search the first array whether that character is being present in the list if it is present subsequently increment the counter in the second array if it is not present that means after reaching the end of the array insert that letter or character in the first list and then initialize the counter you can imagine the number of comparisons that are that are executed for the for the different characters or letters that are present in a in a string again the problem with this mechanism is a space we need to have two arrays but no oh, wastage of memory but cause no empty cells the problem is with the time in order to increment the counter for every character that character need to be searched the location of the character or the location of the counter need to be identified through a uh, comparison for that we have to use a linear search which is more compute intensive so these are the two simple solutions with the limitation the best data structure to solve this problem is a dictionary where dictionary doesn't require any element or item comparisons or no empty cells being present in the dictionary whenever the 
character is to be considered put it in a dictionary as the first item with the character as a key with the with the value that is one counter one frequency one and whenever the same character appears increment the counter the value in the dictionary with the key as a character or a letter and whenever new letter or character appears again insert in the dictionary with the value 1 and for every reappearance you increment the value at, at a location key so this dictionary implementation is very efficient in terms of space no wastage of memory as well as it is it doesn't take much compu computer computational time let's see the python solution for the frequency counter problem with the help of dictionary Let's take a string or a word with letters. What we have to do is first we have to create a dictionary with no items. D is equal to DICT dictionary. We are going to create a dictionary, empty dictionary. Next, what we have to do is we have to start from first letter till the end of the letter we have to check whether this letter is present in the dictionary if it is not present then initialize the counter at dictionary with the key as a character or letter with one and if the character is already present in dictionary as a key then increment the existing counter that's what we are doing here for each character for each character in the word starting from the first till the end if a particular character in the given iteration is not in the dictionary here c is nothing but a key if key is not in d that means is a new character arrived or new letter that is being arrived you provide a room for it by inserting this key value pair key is nothing but a new character which is not there so far and its value is nothing but a first appearance that is equal to one if this key, if this character C or letter is already present, we will come to this else portion. That means it is already appeared earlier and it has got some value representing the frequency of appearance. We just increment it. D of C represents the value equal to old value plus 1. So with this, we get the frequency of all the letters that are all the distinct letters that are present in this word. Finally, we just print the entire dictionary. We will get the result in terms of key colon value pairs. If you want a formatted output, use a for loop and then print the value accordingly with the formatted output so this the problem of uh, creating the set of counters is also termed as generating a histogram which is a statistical term that is being used uh, to refer the set of uh, frequency counters Dictionaries support 
a number of methods. One important method is a get method. It takes two parameters and returns a value. The first parameter is a key and the second is a default value or a programmer defined default key value and the return value is dependent on the presence of a key in a dictionary if a key is present in the dictionary the get returns the corresponding key value from the dictionary otherwise it returns the programmer supplied default a value let's illustrate the get method let's take up an example with the three items in a dictionary called counts first item second item and third item and we execute this statement print counts of get of key that is the first parameter jan with the default zero this function counts dot get of jan comma zero returns hundred because jan is present in the dictionary and its corresponding value 100 is returned and then it is printed let's take up one more statement counts dot get of tim comma zero the key tim is not found in the dictionary that's why the default supply value zero is returned from this function get it is not necessary that we have to write a default value 0. We can supply any type of value, either a minus 1 or a string or a floating point, etc. Let's modify the previous program of a, of a frequency counter by replacing those if statement with the get. So get method uh, returns a uh, key value if key is present else it returns a default value by using a get function in the previous program we can eliminate the if statement thereby you can we can reduce the number of lines so let's look at the program so we have a word with number of letters we created empty dictionary and for each letter in the string we just check whether the letter is present in the dictionary by using a get and if it is present that means it that letter has already appeared we increment the count the existing count is returned because the value represents the existing count that is incremented if the letter is a newly arrived letter to the dictionary then this returns a zero because the letter is not present in the dictionary as a key and we initialize the count with a 1. That's what we do, D of C. So with this, we can, we can reduce the number of lines in the program. Now let's take up the issue of file handling with dictionary, especially the processing the file contents with dictionary. To illustrate uh, the role of dictionaries in file processing, we'll take up the frequency counter as an example. Here we try to count the occurrence of distinct words present in the file. We assume that file contains a words uh, with spaces, no other special characters. So what is the logic behind this? We have to open a file in a read mode then read each line at a time then remove the extra blank spaces from both the left side of the line as well as the right side of the line then split the line based on the white space between the words 
and try to insert the words into a dictionary with the value as a initial count one if that word is already present already present in the previous line or in the same line then we try to increment the count this has to be done for all the lines present in a file and finally we print the dictionary as it is this is the program you read the file name from the console and open the file if file is not present in the in the secondary storage exit otherwise create a empty dictionary then for each line you can even have one more statement here saying that words is equal to line dot or line equal to line dot strip or you can if you don't have any additional blank spaces you can directly split the line based on the space this will create a list of words present in a line and try to insert each of the line each of the word each of the word present in the list for a particular line increment the counter in the dictionary if that word is already present increment here and if the word is newly new word then initialize the counter with a value at a keyword with one and finally after after handling all these lines you print the dictionary you will get the word with a colon its count so you can even use a for loop to have a, a very formatted output with the word and its and its uh, count how to traverse the dictionaries a simple method is to use a for statement to traverse the keys that are present in the dictionary let's take up one dictionary with the three items first item second and third item and if you want to display or to traverse through each of the item use a for statement for key in counts counts is a dictionary try to print the key and the the value at the dictionary with the key we need to use the index operator to access the value that is present in the dictionary for the corresponding or for a particular key if you want to display only the values about n then you can include a if statement if counts of key that is the value at a given key is greater than 10 then you print key at the the value at the at that key so you can have even formatted statements with a meaningful uh, message while printing keys as well as the value at the keys remember you can use a for loop to traverse through the dictionary items and to access the value for each key use the index operator if you want to print the keys in alphabetical order what we have to do is first we have to create a list of keys and to create a list of keys we have one a method which is associated with the dictionary called keys this method is associated with the dictionary and returns a list of keys and once we have the list of keys we can sort the list in the ascending order and then by traversing the list 
through a for loop we can fetch or we can access the value that is present the dictionary uh, with the particular key here we have a small uh, program segment we have created a dictionary with three items and now we create a list of only keys that are present in the dictionary with the method called keys so this keys method is associated with the dictionary counts and then we sort the list of keys and then we traverse the each of the element which is a key in the list to print the key and try to fetch the value from the dictionary which is uh, which correspond to a particular key so even we can have a formatted statement by specifying the meaningful message for the key as well as for the value while traversing or while printing the key in the corresponding value in the alphabet order of the we have number of methods in python to process strings we have a method called lower which converts a string from upper case to lower case we have a method a punctuation which gives the all the special character punctuations it gives a list of punctuations and we have one more a substal a method called translate so translate is a method is used to convert a string from one form to another form with the multiple options so this is a, a rough syntax of translate here line is a string variable line dot translate so this translate method is associated with the string so that we need to import import string and the parameter to this translate is the a table of information for the transformation and we have to use one more method which is associated with the string called make trans which, which creates the table of characters that are used to modify the string we use a method str dot make trans make trans will create a table of characters for modification it takes three parameters from str is a set of characters to be replaced and to str is a set of characters as a replacement and delete str is the set of characters to be deleted from the given line so line is a string try to understand a translate method will translate the string form by taking the table of information which is generated through a method called make trans str dot make trans which takes two para three parameters from str character set to be set for the replacement and uh, uh, characters to be replaced character set to be replaced and the set of characters as a replacement characters and the characters to be deleted from the given line and while using this translate this these three parameters are optional you can make from str and to str empty optional in the sense you can make them empty strings and also you can have a, a empty string here or you can specify the list of character or set of characters to be deleted from the given string as i said to use these functions we have to import a string 
library and this string dot punctuation will return all these characters punctuations now let's modify the word frequency counter program with dictionary we assume now a file has number of words lines and each line contain number of words or even a special characters punctuations like this the solution is uh, quite simple we open a file we have to import the library first string library then open a file in a read mode and if file is not present and create empty dictionary and read the file line by line remove the uh, white spaces from either side of the line then you translate that line here i don't have any character set for replacement we are not replacing anything but we have a set of characters to be deleted so third parameter is non empty in the make trans first two characters the sets set of characters are empty parameters are empty the third parameter is a set of characters to be deleted all the punctuations are deleted and now we get a new line line dot translate will create a new line by deleting all the punctuations so now i have i have the line having words and the spaces that's it and if you want to convert all the words into a lower case use line dot lower all the letters become the lower case and then you split the line we get the list of words and then each of the word if it is a new word to be added into a dictionary it is added with the count one and if word is appeared again appears again then count is incremented so this is done for all the words in the line and from here to here this is done for all the lines present in the file with that we get the a frequency of distinct words present in the file even the file has the special characters and white spaces or tabs in it these are the few exercise programs are quite simple already have uh, communicated the solutions to these pro pro problems and the last problem is a uh, same problem which we had solved in the list here what we have to do is for every entry for every uh, angle of attack that we are going to read we need to put it in the dictionary with the appropriate scaled sound pressure and once all these items are present with the key of, as a angle of attack as a key and the the value corresponding value representing the scale sound pressure we can use a for loop to traverse and to get the average scaled sound pressure for the given uh, uh, angle of attack so here we are not worried about the range of angle of attack for each of the angle of attack we are going to um, store the the sound pressure and then we are going to get the average scaled sound pressure for all these angles of attack and these are these programs are also uh, very simple the last program is to display a distinct words in a file with the length of the word along with the key word you just you, you can even display the length of word okay and uh, frequency that's being uh, a part of uh, the dictionary that's a value you can also refer these websites for further reading